Right, my name is Michaela Dickerson and I'm a recruiter for Itawamba Community College. I work primarily on our main campus in Fulton. Perfect. And so the first thing that we're going to talk about today, Michaela, is the admissions process. So for ICC, um, when does the application typically open for admission? And then do you have a set deadline or is it more of a rolling deadline? Um, just touch on that first. All right, so our admissions application is what we call an open application. We, it doesn't necessarily open on a certain day. There's not really a certain deadline for it. So we have some students as early as junior year of high school to apply for admissions. And our application is um, at a website. It's really easy. It's just apply.iccms.edu. And so is it fully and completely online now? Do y'all still have any paper applications? But we are completely online perfect. with all of our applications. I think most schools have moved to that, but there may be a couple that still offer the paper route. Um, so that's why we're still kind of asking that. Um, what items are needed for the application process? So some schools need a partial transcript or in progress. Some schools just need final. So what is it for ICC? Um, for us, you can definitely go ahead and fill out the application and then send in the extra things later, but you are going to need to send in your ACT scores and a final high school transcript. So typically for us, our students don't send it to us until they graduate. Perfect. And is uh, our ACT scores required for admission or is it test optional? Um, we do require ACT scores. We don't require a certain score, though, to be admitted. We use our ACT scores for two things, mostly, just to determine scholarship eligibility, and then we also use them for class placement. Some classes, like college algebra, English Comp 1, English Comp 2, require a certain subscore in those areas. Perfect. So let's move into scholarships and ACT scores and all that fun stuff. So, because we all know the ACT is fun. Um, so with ACT for scholarship purposes, are, is ICC super scoring or is it based on your highest composite? We will accept super scores um, for scholarships and anything that your ACT is required for. So yes, we'll take super scores. And is there a final ACT date that you accept? So like some schools won't accept ACTs after the December test and some schools won't accept after February. So is there a certain test for you guys? Right, um, we don't have exactly like a certain test date, but we do have a last date that will accept scores. So the last date that we will accept scores is August 15th for students wanting to begin in the fall in August. And then for those students who maybe graduate early and wanna start in January in the spring, it's January 15th. Okay, January 15th. So whichever, whichever test they take and they get this, you know, you've got a long period of time to wait to get those test scores back. So the latest test would probably be maybe the June test um, that we would be able to take because, you know, if you take the July test, sometimes the wait period for getting your scores back would be too long. Yeah, but that's good to know, though, that you can kind of take it all the way into the summer. Like you have in mm -hmm. that, that's good. Um, so talking about ACT scores and scholarships is What's your minimum ACT score required for your ACT scholarships? The minimum will accept an 18. So we start scholarships at an 18 on the ACT and we of course go all the way to a 36. We kind of split it up into three or four different sections. Um, for us, a 24 on your ACT will cover your tuition. Um, a 28 or higher will cover your tuition, your dorm room and your meal plan. And is there a separate application for those specific scholarships? Um, those scholarships, um, that application is in that portal. So that apply website that I mentioned earlier, you can access the admissions application, the scholarship application, and our housing application through it. And so one more scholarship application question is, is it all one scholarship application or say like ACT scholarships are in one application? foundation scholarships are in a separate application you know is it all one big one or is it separated out um well i think we kind of have a unique application so we probably have the easiest application for scholarships that you'll find for us it's two clicks and you're applied 
Um, once you click on that scholarship tab, you'll see the ACT scholarship application. You'll click on the text box that says apply. You'll click and I agree to a text box statement and you're applied and then you'll scroll to the bottom of the page and you'll see the list of foundation scholarships. Now we have around 94 foundation scholarships. So you can go through and click apply on those and you're applied. Probably five or six of those you will have to write an essay for, but you can send those in later. So it's a kind of a not a clear answer to that question, but it is a very easy process as far as you just go in and click and click I agree. Yeah. And OK, so moving a little bit further in, in depth on that, though, with the FAFSA. So okay. is FAFSA required? And so I guess I know for foundation scholarships, sometimes you have the financial need piece. And mm -hmm. so I would, you know, I know FAFSA would be required for those specific scholarships. But you all have like a priority deadline for FAFSA or even is it required for all students, scholarship students, any students? Like what's your FAFSA policy? Um, as far as like our ACT scholarships, it's not required for those. Now we have a program that's kind of unique is our county guaranteed tuition program. Mm -hmm. um, now with this program, students within the eight counties that are a part of this agreement um, can get their tuition covered. Now it's, it's not like they automatically get it. They always apply the scholarships and FAFSA first and then they can get it. But you do have to apply for the FAFSA to apply for this grant. Um, you also have to apply for FAFSA to apply for state aid. So if you want to receive Mississippi state aid, you have to apply for the FAFSA. Now, as far as anything else, we don't really require FAFSA for just admissions in general. Um, of course, we encourage it because the FAFSA can be a very helpful um, piece in your financial aid with college in general. Um, and we don't really have a priority date for the FAFSA. Um, it is, the FAFSA is due March 15th for the students wanting to begin in the fall of 2022. Um, but I know that sometimes things happen, students might miss the deadline, and there's kind of a process for late applications for FAFSA. So we don't really have our own priority. Gotcha. Um, okay, so moving off of, you know, scholarships, ACT, I want to touch on housing for just a second before we move into um, programs and academics. So with the housing application, I know you mentioned your admissions application is, you know, open always and fully rolling. Is the housing application similar or does it have a specific open and close? It's also similar. It's more of an open application. Again, we have students as early as their junior year of high school applying for housing. Part of that is our housing is very popular here. Um, mm -hmm. We do have around 5,000 students enrolled. At the moment, we can house about 1,000 students. Now, some of our 5,000 students are dual enrolled or they're online. Um, but, mm -hmm. I mean, we're working on creating more housing. So that's one reason why students, we leave it open so some students can apply a little bit early if they're ready for it. Um, but yeah, so students can just go in. Now you do have to apply for admissions first. So there's a little bit of a process there. First step is to apply for admissions. Once you've done that, you can apply for anything else. Right. And so you've got to have, I'm assuming like your student ID number or your password to be able to access the rest of those like housing and financial aid and scholarships. Well, you when you go through the admissions application, you create an account um, mm -hmm. and that account is the that's the only time you're going to use it is for that application portal. And you can log back into that account and do all three applications at one time if you want to. Gotcha. Um, now, some students do wait. And when they try to go back in, sometimes they have to use the new account created by SEC. So it just kind of depends on your time period, how you do that. OK, OK, I got you on that. Um, and so maybe there's not a specific deadline for housing, but do you see, do y'all's housing, does it fill up pretty quickly? Like, do you have a wait list? Like, when would you encourage students to really start applying to that? Or kind of like the last time that you would say, like, you need to do it by now. <laughs> yes, I typically recommend students to apply for housing as soon as possible. The way that our housing works right now is there's a deposit that students pay that's their placeholder. Now, the deposit's refundable, so if they apply for housing and pay the deposit and get put in line, then they can get that money back. Now, um, a lot of times I will tell my students to apply hopefully no later than August uh, or September 
of their senior year. I really want them to apply by the summer before their senior year because in the past, our wait list has started forming as early as October wow. for the seniors who are about to be incoming freshmen. Yeah, that's really early. So, I mean, if you're thinking about going to ICC and you want to live on campus, you got to get that done early. That's crazy. Um, so let's talk a little bit about academics. So we know that with, you know, community colleges and junior colleges, there's two main tracks with, you know, uh, the technical side of things versus the academic, uh, getting ready to transfer side of things. And I know there may be various branches to that, but um, are there any specific programs or unique programs that ICC offers that maybe is not offered at other campuses or maybe just programs that you're really proud of? For sure. So we have three academic pathways. Our, one of them is our academic transfer program. So students gain their associate's degree and transfer on to a four-year university or senior college and finish out a bachelor's. Um, that's our most common, of course. And then we've got the health science programs where students will go through um, one to two-year programs in a health science-related field. And then they can either go into work, but also some of those programs can bridge to a bachelor's. So that that's just on their um, kind of their preference there. And then our third is our career technical. Um, now with our career technical, most of those are one or two year um, certification or licensed programs, and you can go straight to work with those. Our One of our number one majors, we kind of go back and forth every year, but most of the time nursing is our number one major. We do get a lot of nursing students. We have a fantastic health science building that has a great nursing simulation lab. Um, students get the classroom experience, but then they have the experience of going into a lab with um, mannequins that can talk to you, uh, mannequins that you can practice giving IVs on, blood pressure. We've got mannequins that can give birth. We, I mean, we've got it all. Um, and with that, you're going to get that experience, but then you also get your clinical. So you're going into hospitals in the area and you're getting that experience. Um, and then with our career technical programs, we have a lot of um, agreements with organizations and businesses around our area. And the great thing that we do is a lot of times how we create or we establish a new program within either of those fields, we'll see um, a business will come to us or an organization will come to us and say, we need people to work in this area. And so we'll say, okay, we'll help work with us. We'll create a program so students can get training and education and then they can come work for you. So it's a really great way. I mean, we've got the Toyota program. That was kind of our first one, our first big one we did. Um, but we started getting a lot more since then. And they get some hands-on training. And most of our students will have internships, paid internships. And they're getting paid really well to work and get their education. And then when they're done, their internship usually turns into a job. So it's a great opportunity, especially for students who may not be as academically inclined as far as sitting in a classroom um, and reading books all the time, maybe somebody who's more hands-on with things. Um, so those programs are great. And then with our academic transfer programs, we do have an articulation agreement with all the Mississippi schools so that we make sure that everything that people take here will transfer to what the universe they want. Now that's with Mississippi schools. It translates a little bit differently with some schools in other states, but um, it is a really great articulation agreement because most of our students do tend to transfer to a university in Mississippi. Yeah, that, um, that Toyota partnership is, is great. And I know you all have a lot of students that probably come in you know, for that and, mm -hmm. and go through that. But I was going to also touch on nursing. My sister was a nursing student at ICC way back in the day. It's great to hear that you'll have more mannequins because I recall <laughs> her trying to stick me with IVs. Like, I do not consent to this. Like, y'all need to get some mannequins or something. No, but I'm, I'm sure that they've gotten more since then. But, uh, yeah, she, yes. she enjoyed that. Yeah, we we're always seem to be improving here and, and building new things. We've got a new dorm being built right now. But that health science building is only a few years old. Um, and they are getting more and more newer equipment, more updated modern equipment, more equipment that these students are actually going to see. Um, in the real world. I mean, I know our surgical te technology program, they've got a um, simulator where you can 
it's like you're taking out gallstones. Um, and so every time I give a group tour at our health science building and we have all these health science students come in and they're playing this game and I have to drag them out and I'm like, we still got more on the tour. <laughs> and yeah. they just love it. I mean, it's a lot of fun, even for someone like me, who's very squeamish about that kind of thing. I just, I think it's a really great, great thing that we've got and they're just always improving it. Yeah. And I can say that too, because I was a student at ICC um, from 2000, let's see, 2006 to 2008. So since then, when I've visited campus, I mean, it's, it's changed so much. So there's new residence halls, the, you know, those mm -hmm. health science buildings, everything is just really, really nice. So it's always good to see things, you know, improving and moving okay. forward for sure. Um, all right. So before we wrap up, I'm, I'm going to open the floor to you, give you a chance to talk. You can talk, you know, campus life, you can talk more academics, but I'll just let you, you know, anything new and exciting that you'd like to share with high school counselors or students about Itawamba Community College? Of course. Well, I mean, there's a lot that I could talk about, really. Um, Absolutely. As far as, uh, well, all, all of our academic programs are great, but we do like to have fun on campus. Um, so if you come to campus, you'll know that we've got something. I always tell people when they come for a tour, you're never going to go hungry, number one, because we have some really good food on campus and there's free food at all of our events. And then you're all, never going to be bored because you're going to be doing your homework. But then there's also going to be a lot of fun stuff on campus. So we actually have a new coordinator of student activities this year. She was a recruiter um, over the summer and we had a lot of transition and happen in the summer. Um, but now she's been planning all of our fun events. We've had um, homecoming week. We had a pet a puppy event. Um, everyone loved getting to pet a bunch of puppies from a local humane society. Um, we've had a lot of community service projects that students can be a part of. We've had our homecoming pep rally and homecoming campaigns and then student government association. We've had lots of campaigning going on with that. Um, so there's all kinds of events. But on top of that, we have over 35 clubs and organizations. Um, so lots of things to get involved in pretty much anything you can think of. We've probably got it, um, but if we don't, there's a really simple process to start your own club or organization. You just have to get some friends, a supervisor, and then go through SGA and get it approved. So we have a new club this year. Actually, we have two. One is Fashion Tribe. So we've got students who model for that. We've got students who do the photography. We have students who do the hair and makeup. So if you're interested in any of that, it's a great thing. Um, and next semester, they're going to have a runway show. So that'll be fun. And then our other one is our ICC boys. They're our hype team for the student sections at um, our football and basketball games. And they've been doing a really great job. But we have those. We have intramural sports. So if you are interested in um, sports, maybe you don't want to compete on a collegiate level. We have intramural sports. And if your team wins, you get a free T-shirt. Um, and then we do have our 11 intercollegiate sports that are competitive. We've got all kinds of things, anything from basketball, baseball, softball, football, pretty much all your normal sports. We've got a bash fish team club. We've got archery, all kinds of stuff. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about student life. I could probably talk forever on it because there's just so much going on. But I know one of our favorite events will be coming up in the spring semester, which is Indian week. So it's our spirit week. Um, usually we have a crawfish boil and we've got inflatables. I know this year we're talking about um, uh, having an event where students get to pie their teachers and um, some staff on campus if they like. So a lot of fun things go in there. Um, let's see, we've got an honors college. So for those students who are high achievers and really great with their academics, our honors college for freshmen, you do need to have a 24 or higher on your ACT to get in. Um, once you're in, you take an honors class each semester, and then you take what we call an honors forum. Um, I like to call it, um, you're solving the world's problems in that class because you just talk about relevant topics. You learn how to be a leader and you learn how to communicate better with people who have, may have different opinions. Um, and then we have our Phi Theta Kappa. I don't know how many community colleges you've talked to, but I'm sure that they've mentioned it at some point or somebody has. But Phi Theta Kappa is an international honor society for community college students. You do have to go to community college to be in it. Um, and for us, I mean, you take 12 hours of community college credit through ICC. You keep a 3.5 GPA. You get invited in and you pay a one-time membership fee. Once you're in, you keep a 3.3 and you're a member for life. Now, 
I was a big PTK person when I was in college. I actually came to ICC um, and I loved it. And so I would tell you, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. You meet new people. But what most people are going to tell you is about the scholarships because it is the best scholarship opportunity for community college students especially for those looking to transfer. Um, a lot of students are financially better off if they go through PTK and get those scholarships than some students who don't. Um, so that's just something to look into. Um, any student can get into that as long as they meet those requirements. Um, now with our dorms, I haven't really talked a lot about our, our residence halls. Uh, we do have seven, we will have eight. Our new one will be open in the fall. So next August, we'll have a new one called Magnolia Hall. Now this one is gonna be an honors slash leadership dorm. So for freshmen, it's a preferred 24 or higher on your ACT, um, not necessarily required, but it's preferred, it will help you. And then for sophomores, they're looking more at your leadership and your involvement. So those sophomores are probably gonna fill up that dorm a little bit more than the freshmen will, but for my freshmen out there, maybe you don't have a 24 on your ACT. Don't worry about it. Once you get to your, once you get here, get super involved. And then in your sophomore year, you may get to get into that new dorm. Um, but one more thing that I just want to mention is that really the best thing that you can do, it's really a piece of advice, I guess, but the best thing you can do for us and for any other college is just take a tour. Um, come visit campus, come see what we have to offer. We do have three locations. You can tour any of those three locations. Um, we've got Fulton, Tupelo, and Belden. Belden is pretty close to Tupelo. Um, but what you'll do in a tour, you'll come in, you'll sign in, and then we will meet with you, myself or another recruiter, and we'll meet with you just for a few minutes and we'll go over a booklet. Um, actually, I've got it right here. It'll look like this. And it will have all the information that you will need to know. Everything from how much it's going to cost to what kind of activities we have, um, just anything you may have questions about. And we will answer any questions you have. Um, and then we will take you out on a tour and you'll get to see a classroom. You'll get to see a dorm room. You'll get to see a lot of our buildings on campus. Um, so it's a really great way to get to know the college. And, you know, it may sound cheesy, but once you get to a college campus, try to picture yourself there. Try to see if it feels like somewhere you could call home for a little while. Um, so definitely come take a tour with us and I hope to see you there. All right, awesome. So thank you so much, Michaela. That's a lot of great information about Itawamba Community College, a lot of um, improvements and sounds like they're headed in the right direction. So it's great to hear. Um, so thank you once again. Thank you also to our counselors and our students who find this video. We hope that you find it helpful. I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Thank you.